Good morning. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. Are you all right? Yes, sir. Lovely. Let's try and continue talking about speech sounds in natural languages. And we have seen during the last two weeks that all speech sounds can be broadly classified into two major categories. What are those categories? Vowels and consonants. Vowels differ from consonant, consonants differ from vowels. Though there are consonants which look like vowels, but do not behave like vowels. There are consonants which behave like vowels, but do not look like vowels, but they are very few. You know nature always has exceptions to many rules. You read in a book of anatomy that most people have only 32 teeth, but suddenly you come across someone who has 34 teeth or you suddenly come across someone who has 6 fingers. Okay. They are for want of better word, we call them the freaks of nature. Okay. But by and large consonants are consonants and vowels are vowels. How do vowels differ from consonants? Vowels are? Voiced, voiced, oral, oral and unobstructed. 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 All the three things together, no exception to that. If they are not voiced, if they are not oral or if they are not or if they are obstructed, if they are not unobstructed, then they are not vowels. Consonants on the other hand is everything else. A consonant may or may not be oral, may or may not be voiced may or may not be obstructed, correct? Yesterday, we also saw that there can be different kinds of consonants. Do you remember major classes? Can you name any major class of consonant? Plosive. plosive. Okay. What are plosives? <coughs> plosives are those consonants which have total obstruction and major class of consonants. Actually, major classes of consonants. So, number one, we have Plosive. What is the characteristic of a plosive sound? A plosive sound is produced with total obstruction and sudden release. Please write total obstruction, but sudden release. Then we have a class of sounds phoneticians call affricate. What are they? How do you, how do you define affricates? What is the characteristic of affricate sound? It has total obstruction, but gradual release. Marvelous. God bless you. Okay. And then we talked about fricatives. What are their characteristics? They have partial obstruction, partial audible obstruction, okay. because the obstruction is partial, so the question of release does not arise. Okay. We also looked at uh, the English language sounds, major sounds, major classes in the English language and we saw that English has about half a dozen plosive sounds, nine or oh sorry, a, a pair of affricate sounds and nine fricative sounds, a, a little too many. You know, uh, In many Indian languages, we do not have as many fricative sounds, but we have many more plosive sounds. What is the lesson for us? The lesson for us is that nature has broad classes. But each class, are you with me? I am trying to state a scientific truth. You know, nature has broad classes, nature has major classes, 
in, in, in anatomy and physiology books, you will see that all men have a nose, women also have a nose, okay? but no two noses are alike. Races differ from one another depending upon the geometry of nose okay, or trigonometry of nose. Right? So, you know we have major class of sounds, but local variations, English has 9 fricatives, but only 6 plosives. There are Indian languages which have 9 plosives or a dozen plosives, but only 2 or 3 fricatives. Okay? These difference, there are languages which have no fricatives, there are languages which have very few consonants, more vowels, there are languages which have more consonants, few vowels. Okay? All of these combinations and permutations are there in nature, but the fact of life is that there are these major classes of sounds that differ from one another. Okay? So, so far we have looked at English and we have seen that English has half a dozen plosives, a pair of affricate sounds and nine fricative sounds. Okay? So, how many do we get that way? 17, right? Okay. English also has nasal sounds. Sounds in the production of which uh, velum is, see this is velum. Are you with me? Are we together please? Look at the screen and you know just see the arrowhead, this is velum right? or uvula. Okay? When uvula is raised, speech air passes through, please complete the sentence. When uvula is raised, speech air passes through the mouth, through the oral passage. But when uvula is lowered, speech air passes through the nasal passage. right? and we produce nasal sounds. Many languages in the world, some languages have lot more. English has only three, Malayalam, Tamil have five each, Telugu has about three or four, uh, you know. And Malayalam is supposed to have the largest number of nasal sounds. Those who speak Malayalam, anybody who speaks Malayalam in this class? Okay. If you have Malayalam speaking friends, ask them to you know produce nasal sounds and they have nasal sounds from the lips, from the alveolar ridge, from the hard palate, from the soft palate, from pharynx, from nearly everywhere. Okay? Americans also have more nasal sounds than the British. You know when you hear an American for the first time, you think he is talking like you know from his nose. Okay? It, it, it does happen you see. So, there can be nasal sounds there can be oral sounds and there is a third category, there can be nasalized sounds. Okay? When, when uvula or this you know velum, this is only partially lowered, not fully lowered, not fully raised, then what is the result? The speech air partly passes through oral passage and partly through nasal passes then you have nasalized sounds. You know, I, uh, sometimes you come across people who speak with a nasal twang and you know some Americans particularly after certain words, you know they have a nasal twang. I, I have a friend unfortunately, he passed away some years ago and when we were boys we used to make fun of him, but later all our lives we kept apologizing to him because he became a very powerful person, you know billionaire and all that through business and we used to look up to him and we used to say thank you and he would say welcome. Okay. <laughs> These are the freaks of nature, it can happen. Look at the English language. So, English also has like many other languages nasal sounds. What is the characteristic of nasal sound? All nasal sounds are produced when uvula is raised or lowered? Lowered. So, that speech air passes through the nasal passes. Keep your, you know, like Hitler's salute. Okay? Keep your um, hand 
upward or downward near your nose and just produce sounds like mm, do it or say mm, or say do you feel where do you feel the air is coming from from your mouth or from your nose from your nose is the nasal passage okay english also has nasal sounds uh, let's see the english list okay uh, english has m it's not ma it, what is it it is m <laughs> okay what is it Mm, okay. Both your lips tightly shut together and air passes through the nasal passage and you get the nasal sound. Mm. How do you describe it? Do not look at the screen and try and describe it. Attempt your own description, please. You know, in the end you can look at the, look at the screen. Mm, first try, mm, as in met or as in mat or as in meet. Okay, and then say voiced, then it is bilabial and then nasal, wonderful really, voiced, bilabial, nasal. Okay. Let us go to the next. Mm. Do not look at the screen, now attempt your own description and then compare with the given description. Okay. The best way to learn is these things is by doing it. How do you describe it? Voiced, place of articulation, alveolar, great. But in our languages, in Indian languages, you know, we do not say not, we say nahi, okay. we say na na. We do not say na na, do we say that? Na na ikkar kuchandi, do we say that? unless you go to an English medium school of course, you know. We say na na, we have it dental, but in English it is alveolar okay. and then nasal. So, what is the three term level for uh, n? Close your eyes and tell me please everybody together, voiced, alveolar, nasal, lovely. English has another sound, it, 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 is a, it occurs in only non initial positions of the word. You do not have a word beginning with ang, okay. even in as far as I know, even in Hindi and Sanskrit, you do not have a word that begins with ang. I think it is true also of Telugu, you do not have a word beginning with ang, but okay. this, this particular sound occurs in non-initial positions, <coughs> such as when you say ring, king, bring, long. Okay. In our languages also, we have this sound. Ganga, Changa, okay, Danga, Are, right. So, you know, how do you describe this sound? Do it, produce it, mm, do not look at the screen, Descri have your own description and then compare. Voiced or voiceless? Voiced. All nasal sounds are voiced. All nasal sounds are necessarily voiced. There is no exception, okay. Then, um, let us say, Place of articulation, which part of your oral passage, which part of the tongue creates obstruction, back of the tongue, touches the velum, therefore, velar and nasal. Marvelous, you guys are you know great phoneticians, I hope you have a future in phonetics. Okay, I, I was telling you before you know as we, as we began this morning, I was also telling you about uh, some vowel sounds, some consonants are produced like vowels. Okay. What is the characteristic of vowel? Vowels are oral, continuous and voiced. The vowels are voiced, oral and unobstructed or continuous. There are some consonant sounds which come in one group. Okay. They are also produced like vowels, like you know yara lava. In our alphabet also, we group them together in one corner okay in roman writing system which is what english uses they are all over okay but we are not talking about writing we are talking about speech okay uh, someday we will also talk about writing perhaps right 
So, you know these sounds are continuants, they are grouped together as continuant sounds or in, in layman's language we call them semi vowels. continuants or semi vowels okay now how do we describe them very simple we describe them you know uh, just as we did the vowels okay so for instance the first sound r produce it r okay is it voiced or voiceless keep your finger here r voiced obviously okay i could have said continuant at the end i should have said tap and trill you know how is it produced look at the mechanism of nature when you produce r and you can have you can have various kinds of r it, it's a broad class of sounds there are smaller variations you can have r do it you can only have r as in road but you know in my part of the country when shepherds take their goat and sheep for grazing and if the sheep get stuck in one particular place then they drive the sheep through this way and the sheep start moving maybe you know they have some acoustic effect i don't know so there can be a variety of different kinds of ra, but all ra is characterized by this particular articulatory movement near between the tip and the blade of the tongue okay let's call it the front of the tongue the tip of the tongue you know curls backwards this position and then it touches the upper teeth and sideways along the tongue the speech air can flow okay and as speech air flows the front of the tongue is released and then comes back into contact again understand the process understand the mechanics please the tip of the tongue makes a contact sorry the front of the tongue makes a contact in english with alveolar ridge in indian languages with upper teeth and then it releases the contact in this process all along speech air flows through flows along the sides of the tongue because everywhere else there is opening but this contact you know can happen once when you say road say it it can happen several times in a second when you say do it it strikes several times like you were playing tabla okay it strikes several times this way you know Okay. So, it is either tap or trill and when you say tap or trill it means that it is produced from the front of the tongue. Okay. So, how shall we describe it? Simple we will say r as in road voiced tap or trill then continuant okay. voiced tap or trill then continuant. You see the manner feature should have come last. I made a mistake by putting it in the middle, you can bring it to the last. Okay. So, r as in road, but look at l. Okay. What is the next sound? L. Feel your tongue, you just see how it happens. Do it alternately, say r and say l. Do you feel tongue makes a different kind of movement? What is the difference? What is the difference? Come on. Please somebody allow yourself to be laughed at. Okay? Who will answer? What is the difference? Come on, please. The difference is when you say l, the sides of the tongue fold. You know? Imagine some sheet of cloth some curtain okay which is still in the contact in center but it folds like this it folds actually upwards tongue folds 
is like this, it folds upward and this side and this side, the air flows. Look at the diagram. You know, the speech air flows. This is your tongue. When you produce L, then tip of the tongue is in contact with the upper teeth or alveolar ridge somewhere in that portion of your mouth and sides of the tongue curl, sides of the tongue fold, so that all speech air escapes along the sides of the tongue okay? and you get the sound L. Whereas, when you produce R, the sides do not curl, you know, the opening near the mouth lets the air pass or when you release the tap, when there is there is contact, but when you remove the front of the tongue, the air passes. Okay? That is the difference between road and load in many languages, many people you know. Uh, like you know, uh, I told you about uh, uh, my cousins in my village, we do not distinguish between sir and sir. Many people in south you know, when I travel from my home to Chennai by railway train, we know from the you know the voice of the vendors whether we are in Bhuvneshwar or whether we are in Visakhapatnam. In Bhuvneshwar they sell coffee, coffee, but in Visakhapatnam they sell coffee, coffee. Okay, they don't sell. You know, they each place has its variations. Similarly, in Southeast Asian languages, if you go to China, Japan, many people, not everyone, of course, you know, many people don't distinguish between road and load. So, when they tell give you the car, they will tell you, well, you have a long load or they can say, you have a wrong load, when they mean you have a long road. How would you correct them, if you want, if you have to correct them? Very simple, you will guide their tongue movement. You will say, when you want to say L, you should fold the sides of the tongue. When you want to say R, you should release the front of the tongue, very simple, you know. How shall we describe it? How shall we describe it? L as in load, it is voiced because air passes laterally and laterally means sides of the tongue. So, in literature you will find it written as voiced lateral continuant. Okay? Simple, look at ear. Ear is nothing but a combination of two vowels. E and a. Uh. Say it quickly together. E and a. Uh. Say it quickly. Ya. Yeah. That is ya. And wa, u and a uh, quickly together. Just say u a. Uh, wa, wa. Okay. So, one is a diphthong from yeah. the front of the mouth, the other is a diphthong from the back of the mouth. Ya yeah is a diphthong from the front of the mouth and wa is a diphthong from the back of the mouth. Very simple. Yeah, as in yet, how do we describe it? Voiced palatal semi-vowel. Palatal, you could also say voiced front semi-vowel. No problem. Because you know there are there is only one. Or you can say wa as in wet, you know, to say wa you have to round your lips. Round your lips and say wa. You cannot say it with flat lips. Okay? Ordinarily speaking. So, wet, uh, wa, as in wet, it is voiced, labial, you know, because lips are involved. You could also say back, okay? voiced, back, semi vowel. So, English has three nasal sounds, four continuants. How many sounds does it make? Twenty-four. English, standard British English is supposed to have 24 consonants, but you see it is not the case that it is all alike. You know, when next week when we begin talking about phonology, I am going to contradict all of this. I am going to tell you what we have studied so far is science fiction. Reality of life, reality in nature is a little different, but at the moment we are learning the terminology rather than a particular language. This terminology, the idea of using three term labels referring to articulatory movements 
can be applied across languages. It is not that you can describe only English or Latin or Sanskrit or French with it. You can describe practically any language. You can apply it to the description of mother tongue. Say for instance, I have taken some examples here from my mother tongue, Maithili. Okay? So, uh, you know, I, I, I gave you the demonstration the other day. You can take uh, your own mother tongue. Think of a word beginning with k, right as I have written, k as in please and take a Telugu word, k as in koti, <laughs> you know that is the first name that comes to my mind because of Hyderabad. Okay? K as in write it on the notebook in this manner. Okay? First write the sound, sound that is the speech sound, then write the word where it occurs as in, then because, because Telugu is not known to all, because Maithili is not known to all, so we give meaning, English meaning in, within quotes like this, you know meaning. And then we use three term level. Okay. So, for instance, I have said k as in khan, which means ear, the three term level is voiceless, velar, plosive. Simple. I want you to take example from your mother tongue, not from my mother tongue, please. Okay? We also have, unlike English, another variety and that is where we have to use a different terminology. Say for instance, we have something called use superscript. When you do it on your computer, please use superscript. It is not parallel. Can you see the difference? Yes or no, please. Okay. So, it is not parallel, it is, it is superscript. K as in Khan. I am using normal spelling, not phonetic transcription here. Khan as in the meaning is mine. How do we describe it? It is still voiceless. It is still velar, it is still plosive, but I want your total attention now. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes. Everybody please? Yes, sir. Okay. When does ka change into kha? That is the question. So, what we do is as we release the obstruction, okay, say for instance, take pa. You know, both your lips are together, cheek puffs, and you suddenly release it, and you get pop. Okay, but as you release it, now see the mechanics. Now see the turbulence. Okay, as you release it, you add another puff of, an extra puff of air. Okay, so it becomes pa plus quickly. Yeah, pa plus quickly, very quick, so quick that it becomes pa, okay? so quick that it becomes kha, a gha, a cha, a tha, okay? another added extra puff of air. Because puff of air in Latin is aspiration, inspiration is taking in, throwing out is aspiration. So, here phoneticians call it Wheeler aspirated, aspirated plosive. Are we together? Do you understand? Yes or no, please? Yes, Am I too rapid? Okay, if you do not, please try it once again, you know. The difference between ka and ka is that in, in the production of the speech sound ka, we add an extra 
extra breath of air, extra puff of air, you know, immediately after the release of obstruction. Release of obstruction is essential for the production of plosive sound, but when you add an extra puff of air, it becomes aspirated. Please make a note. Look at another very simple ka ka. Let us take ga in Maithili. Okay. This is what is it in Maithili? Gam. You should be able to write gam meaning village. How do we describe it? Come give me the terminology please. Voiced, wheeler, then plosive. But when we take mark the superscript, it is never parallel. Okay? But here in orthography, normal orthography, I am using Roman alphabet to transcribe the word, I am going to write it parallel. Gham. In English, it will mean sweat. Okay. How do we describe it again? Give me the description please. Voiced or voiceless? Voiced. Place of articulation? Everybody please. Place of articulation? Wheeler. Great. Now, there is this extra thing. How do you describe it? Aspirated. Plosive. It does not matter, you can also say plosive aspirated or aspirated plosive, but in many books you will find aspirated plosive. In some books you can also find plosive aspirated, hardly matters, you know. What is required is voice of voiceless, place of articulation, manner of articulation, correct? Okay. Look at ch as in, you know, as in Telugu word. Can you give me a Telugu word with ch, as in, uh, okay, or uh, as in kuch, or as in chanti, okay, right. Please describe it. The symbol for ch is, this is the symbol for ch. Ch, you know, I have deliberately used lower case S on the screen just to show that our ch is not affricate. Okay. In Indian languages, it is not affricate. Ch. Write it in this manner. Give me a word with ch. Come on, please. Which word? Chercha. Is that Telugu? Chakram. 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 Yeah, or in Telugu, in Tamil, chakar, sugar, achapati. Okay, wow, you are thinking of food all the time. Okay, then give me the meaning. What does it mean? Right. Me wheel. Voice to voiceless. Feel it. That's it. Voiceless. Uh, if you add a, then it becomes voice. If you say ch, then it is voice. Just say ch. Just say ch. Is it voiced? It is voiceless. Okay. Then, place of articulation? Palatal. Manner of release of obstruction? Plosive. Okay. Do you, does Telugu have ch? Does Telugu have this sound? In my mother tongue, we have. Do you have any? Do, do you have this sound? Ch. I think Dravidian languages. Yeah, you can have Sanskrit origin words like chhatram, the canopy, or chhatrapati. You know, canopy. But in my mother tongue, in many North Indian Indo-Aryan languages, particularly North India, Northeast, we have ch. So, for example, I have said chor. Chor can mean quit, it can mean end, it can mean a whole lot of things, different things. It is voiceless, palatal, aspirated, 
explosive. Okay? Right, I think you know, uh, we can go on, we can describe similarly church, uh, judge, uh, we can describe. It may not be a bad idea to take at least six sounds from your mother tongue. Please describe it in this manner, mail it to me. This is an, uh, an assignment, uh, not doing which will bring you no punishment, but doing it will bring you reward. You will understand. So, I do not make it compulsory, but if you try describing some sounds in your mother tongue, one quick test. Can I give you one quick test for two minutes? And then I will say, thank you, have a good day, nice weekend. Okay, and uh, I will pray for uh, distinction to everyone without work. Right? Okay. Be ready, please. I am going to tell you the three term level and you are going to write the symbol. Ready? Voiced interdental fricative as in English. Voiced, why, why English, you know? Voiced interdental fricative. Just write the symbol and compare with the symbol I write. Voiced interdental fricative. This is the symbol. How many people got it right? Raise your hands. Raise your hands, please. Nobody? Okay, at least two. I was going to jump from the third floor of this building, you know. I have been shouting myself over. Okay. Voiced bilabial plosive. Voiced bilabial plosive. Ba. Write the symbol. Okay. Voiced labiodental fricative. Voiced Levioriental fricative. Yeah. Vo voiced, not voiceless. Voiced is one last. Voiced velar nasal. Voiced velar nasal, as in mm. king ring. King. Actually, you know, you should have some practice using symbols. First, write your name. Say, for example, my name using phonetic transcription. What is your name? Write it on you quickly using phonetic transcription. What is the name of our institute? Indian Institute of Technology. Tell me what is it I am writing now? What is it? Technology. Okay. Write Indian. Okay. You, you must have some practice in using these. If you have an English dictionary, you get symbols. I have already given you a copy of these phonetic symbols for English. But you know, if you go to Google, if you just Google IPA chart, you will get a chart on your screen, save it, download it, save it and use it for and you see, you will, ha you will have a new power. You will have learnt an alphabet which only you and a few other people use. You can use that for conversation, for communication, for transcription, for a variety of things. Any questions please? Thank you. Have a good day.